so I would like to quickly introduce you to uh, a great, fantastic panel of speakers here um, uh, to, to go over international uh, rural situation here, um, which is very exciting. I'm going to start with Marvi Maza, uh, who will uh, show us um, uh, a film that she created with, her, uh, with the um, artists. Um, Mavi is uh, an architect and also an activist uh, based in Karachi, Pakistan. Um, and you can maybe introduce a bit more about yourself. But um, yeah, so uh, she's come all the way from uh, Karachi. So fantastic to see you. Um, she works closely with Karina Dean, uh, who is based uh, in London. She's an architect and a teacher. And, um, uh, they are both working on uh, a program called um, Gender Ecologies, and it's a program uh, funded by a British Council. Um, so uh, it's very exciting. And then it, uh, the presentation will be followed by um, Kent Mandel, who is joining us online today. Uh, he's based out in Hong Kong and part of a uh, rural urban framework. Um, it's a research work. And I think uh, there's a, a book that's just come out on their work uh, on rural Mongolia. Uh, and then uh, it's, uh, the presentation will be show, um, followed by um, Sian Cheng and Chen Zhan uh, on uh, talking about their project, Ripple Ripple project. Um, <clears throat> and it's all about their, uh, uh, what they're doing in rural China. And please talk about it more in detail. Um, I can do a fair job uh, in uh, describing your work. Uh, and then uh, it's going to be followed by panel discussion uh, chaired by Shin Egashira, who teaches here at Architecture Association. So without ado, please, Mavi, start. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, I'm going to walk you through like six to seven slides with a trailer at the end. Um, so in a country like Pakistan, with the world's Fifth largest population, already struggling with spiking inflation, mounting international debt, an unstable political situation. The damages caused by the climate crisis are a much larger challenge for Pakistan to figure out on its own. It's a very important to draw the comparative ground for 2012 and 2022 floods. Floods of August 2022 are of monumental scale of devastation and human suffering, which right now is difficult to understand and digest. The damage due to floods in Pakistan estimated $14.9 billion, equivalent to 4.8% of the GDP. As a direct consequence of the floods, around 9 million people have likely been pushed into poverty. The most heart-wrenching aspect of the floods is that they aren't entirely unprecedented. Pakistan's experienced flood disasters in modern history just 12 years ago and it would be difficult to draw a comparison until the current floods have run their course. So just to uh, place the system and to show it to you on the map, this is the pragmatics of how it was uh, last year and the intensity of it. So the province which is mostly the most red is the province where I was working, uh, especially with the, uh, the film that I will, I mean the, the, the trailer that I'll be uh, showing to you. So these are the three aspects I'm going to talk about gently, uh, which is sacred geography, fractured landscape, and infrastructural imagination. The sacred geography coordinates are marked by shrines, trails, alignments, and archaeological sites. Through my research, I have highlighted shrines along the Indus, Indus River, which are important along the contested shoreline of coastal region. The saint's power keeps the indigenous communities together on the land and the sea. Believers interact with sacred thresholds through offerings by narrating stories about them, and communities celebrating saint's powers from catastrophes. These beliefs are not materially marked, but the architecture brings the communities together, either weekly as part of praying, paying respect, or yearly festive events locally called ors. Yet these sacred thresholds keep changing or displacing their shape and position continuously because of dynamic environmental conditions and constant man-made external interventions, especially the appearance of real estate agents, 
who develops and redesigns the geography for investments or when military occupancy creates check posts and bureaucratic urgencies like non-objectival uh, certification, NOC, to commute to and from islands to Delta to mainland. These are all military routes. Today, liquid grounds are controlled by man-made infrastructures and land is controlled for speculative development. Today, we desperately need new methods for imagining the relationship between human and nature, thinking with water to narrate the ecological breakdown through women living on the fractured watery landscapes and ecological dis displacements of wetlands, mangroves, swamps, bogs, marshes, mudflats, all those in-between spaces. The second part, which is the fractured landscape, leads into the trailer of the, leads into the making of the film. Fractured landscape, Pakistan um, exists to, uh, today perhaps in one of the most fragile ecosystems due to constant, rapid, unchecked development, leading to urbanization and crisis. The quest for profit and overpowering alignments of exploitation and reappropriation through mega projects, gated communities, isolated architecture, surrounded by surveillance and militarization of the river and the coastal edges, dates to historical geography of capitalism from mid 19th century to the present. The rapid construction of dams and irrigation systems over the past two centuries altered human river relations to, to support modern lifestyles with high cost for human and non-human communities worldwide. The last section, infrastructural imagination. To understand infrastructural rupture is to accept that too many regional voices are missing from landscapes as we discuss climate justice. The impacts and solution are coming from all over all parts of the world, while the rescuers battle floods in Pakistan. One witnesses the infrastructural ruptures and disparity along the region through various disproportionate vantage points. In the land of the Sufis, where geography is considered sacred and the relationship is beyond economic transaction, as an architect and spatial advocate, I would conclude on the query does Pakistan need to apply global development methodology or spatial democratic justice? In climate catastrophic atmosphere, in its now fundamental function to understand the sacred geography through lens of care management. And this is the new, and this is my view that has become more urgent than ever and thinking of illuminating a new rural Asia. We locate ourselves in between Delta and south of Punjab to understand salt and its relation to the land and water through an ethnographic exploration. The project attempts to underscore the integral relationship between indigenous knowledge on land, ecology, and cultural practices. The documentary film is developed with stories of women near the river and the sea who will talk about their activism, environmental degradation, land rights, and human and non-human epistemologies through poems, songs, and inherited knowledge. <laughs>